The Holderness coastline in the East Riding of Yorkshire stretches 60 kilometres between Flamborough in the north and Spurnhead in the south. The area is infamous for having the highest coastal erosion rate in Europe, with the coastline retreating a distance of over a metre on average every year. In some locations, especially after storms, this figure could be much larger. It's believed that at least three miles of land has been lost since Roman times, with over 20 villages disappearing into the sea. With the coastline consisting of unconsolidated glacial till, left over from the last ice age around 20,000 years ago, it's an easy target for erosion by powerful waves from the northeast. As well as undercutting the cliffs, the low energy waves that then come back off the beach at 90 degrees deposit the material they are carrying, resulting in a steady process of longshore drift. The result of this can be clearly seen at the Spurn Peninsula, located to the south. Evidence is all around of the effect of erosion. Roads have been lost to the sea and many end suddenly with warning signs to dissuade the driver from continuing further, even if the roads are still visible on their sat-navs. In most areas, notably where there are caravan parks, no effort has been made to reduce the rate of erosion, but where larger clusters of houses are found, large amounts of money have been spent on coastal defences. These have often resulted in rapidly increased erosion to the south of any structure put in place, technically known as terminal groin syndrome. Flamborough Head to the northwest of Bridlington shows an interesting range of erosion effects. The waves cut into the chalk creating caves, which then become rock arches. When their top collapses, these turn into pillars or stacks of chalk, a process that happens over a few hundred years rather than much longer timescales. At Barmston, the Barmston main drain flows into an armoured pipeline which is uncovered on the beach. This has resulted in an excellent example of terminal groin syndrome. This pipeline has trapped sediment on its north side and to the south of it an area of increased erosion can clearly be seen. This happens quite quickly with a large area of land being lost to begin with followed by the erosion settling down to a more normal rate as the coastline takes up a new curved shape with the formation of a crenulate shaped bay. At Old Rome, the effects of erosion can clearly be seen with its roads collapsing into the sea. Land use for the holiday park has been lost into the sea, as can be seen by the crumbling footings where static caravans used to be sighted. In places, whole sites have just been abandoned, as the process of erosion has taken more and more land. Skipsea suffers a great deal of erosion too, 
with roads ending abruptly and crumbling into the sea. Roads come to a sudden end in many other locations too, due to the effects of erosion. Atwick has a dead-end road, as well as pipework and cables showing where the caravans used to be sighted. Hornsey has extensive coastal defences which it clearly needs even on days that are less than stormy. There's a concrete seawall and the beach is retained by a set of wooden groins. The front of the seawall is protected with riprap, irregularly shaped boulders made of hard wearing rocks such as granite, designed to dissipate the wave's energy before hitting the wall. Mapleton has suffered from erosion as badly as anywhere along this coastline. In the early 90s, a large riprap rock armour wall parallel to the coast and two large granite boulder rock groins were constructed with the stone coming from Norway at a cost of approximately two million pounds. This has enabled the area to retain a large sandy beach protecting the land behind it. There is, however, another cost. Increased erosion south of the large rock groin. Terminal groin syndrome is clearly visible with a huge crenulated bay carved out to the south. Aldborough's road to Mount Pleasant has disappeared too. Old maps show the location of the road and a Coast Guard station that have since disappeared into the sea. A number of roads in Tunstall have disappeared as well.
you were once able to go north from Monkwith towards Hilston. Now one has to take a large detour inland. Withensea is also well protected with a range of coastal defence methods. There's a large concrete seawall as well as extensive riprap rock armour in front of it there are also a number of wooden groins stretching out to the sea to reduce the effect of longshore drift. They help to retain a beach that also reduces the power of the waves hitting the shoreline, but they do have rather a large visual impact on the area. To the south of the riprap, terminal groin syndrome is at work again, eating away a huge crenulated bay at the unprotected Golden Sands Holiday Park, with its holiday chalets having to be moved so as not to fall victim to the sea. Extensive cost-benefit analysis has to be done in advance of any sea defence construction, as construction costs many millions of pounds. Not everyone gets the benefit of these large spends. Roads at Holmton have been lost to the sea and, as ever, it's interesting to study old maps to see what used to exist in places like this. Longshore drift has led to the build-up of material on the ever-growing Spurn Peninsula, a spit of land at the southern end of the coastline at the mouth of the Humber River, which is now over three miles long. Here, waves meet the Humber estuary and lose energy dropping the material that they're carrying in a process of deposition. Coastal erosion is not a new process, and it's not going to go away. Management methods need to be carefully considered, as protecting the whole of the coastline from erosion is not practical. Many areas will be left to erode into the sea, and the maps of the area will again look very different in 50 years' time. The question remains, what to save at what cost? Difficult decisions for the current and next generation of geographers and planners.